Hello and welcome to Wisconsin in Focus, powered by the Center Square. I'm J.D. Davidson, the Center Square Regional Editor. Joining me today is Ben Yao, Wisconsin contributor for the Center Square. Ben, how are things today? Well, pitchers and catchers arrived last week. The full team arrived on Monday. The first spring training game for the Brewers is Saturday. And Brandon Woodruff just signed a contract extension. Yes, he's not going to pitch this year. But you know what? We didn't lose him like we've lost so many others. So, uh, yeah, it, it is it is spring baseball and hope springs eternal. Yeah, and we're two months away from the NFL draft. And now we've got... 12 teams in the college football playoff and uh, it's been a good sports week for mid-February when nothing's going on. So we are recording this on Thursday, February 22nd, 2024. Ben, the debate over school choice continues around the country and the money debate always follows. School choice proponents and opponents constantly seem to be at odds over what to do with taxpayers' money when funding new forms of education options. What's the newest idea in Wisconsin? Decoupling. And I know that sounds every bit as exciting as it is. It actually, it would be a monumental shift for school choice in Wisconsin. And and I, I put it on Twitter. I said, this would be good for public schools, but because it would be really good for choice schools, Democrats here in Wisconsin are very reluctant to support it. And what this does is it changes how choice schools are paid for. Right now, if you're a student in Milwaukee and you choose to go to a magnet school, well, the money follows that child. So your magnet school, your your, your, your voucher school gets the money that the city of Milwaukee's public schools would have gotten. And that's that's per student aid. Under the decoupling plan, the state of Wisconsin would just straight up pay the voucher school. So Milwaukee public schools would not lose any of their local tax money when the student goes to a different school. Schools still paid based on butts in seats. So if a student's not going to MPS, they're not going to get paid for that. But decoupling removes choice schools from the local property tax roll. It says that this is no longer a local funding issue. This is a state funding issue. That gives public schools more stability. There is also essentially a hold harmless, a one time 25 percent bump for public schools so that no schools get left holding the bag. Some schools may get less in general state aid, that per pupil money, but nobody in real dollars to dollars is going to wake up next week and have a million fewer dollars in their school budget because of decoupling and because of school choice. You've had school district administrators who say, look, we're going to lose this money anyway. But under the decoupling plan, we know when, when we set our budgets and, and, you know, school budgets are set in the spring and then you have kids who show up in the fall. What decoupling would do is it would say, OK, when you set that school budget in the spring, those numbers are going to carry over. You're not going to get that sort of fifth day of school. Oh, my God, we had more kids choose to opt out this year. And now we're looking at a hole. For choice schools, this would be one of the biggest victories, not the biggest. That was the expansion, but one of the biggest victories because it would set into stone their funding source. It would it would have the state of Wisconsin pick up the cost. And, you know, choice schools have lived in fear for years of losing their money, of 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 unstable funding. And so this would provide stability for choice schools. And as choice schools have told have told people for years, what they could do with just the basic per pupil public school allotment would be amazing. But most time choice schools educate kids for far less. So this is this is a huge shift in the way that Wisconsin would pay for choice schools. But again, as we were talking about when we talked about the maps, you know, there's a view from Democrats, why take 99%? when you can maybe get 110 in the future. And so I I do not expect while this sailed through the assembly, I do not expect this to go anywhere when Governor Evers gets the plan, because, you know, next year there may be a different legislature. And next year, the, the, the Wisconsin Supreme Court may issue an order dealing with school choice. And next year, Democrats may be able to roll school choice back because that's been one of their goals for the past decade. It's a, a very interesting thought. So currently, 
and, and please correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Is the local school district responsible for forwarding that money to the magnet or charter school? It, yes and no. Again, you know, Milwaukee Public Schools doesn't go down the streets to every grocery store and gas station and collect their share of taxes. The, the, the state's Department of Revenue does this. And through the, the, the sort of magic of math and, and, you know, money's just numbers in a computer uh, kind of stuff anymore, that, that that's that's how it is allocated. But, yes, you know. Right now, Milwaukee Public Schools say, okay, here's our tax levy. When you get your tax bill, when you get your property tax bill, so much is set aside for Milwaukee Public Schools. That's the money that gets broken down and sent with a choice student. What this would do is it would say, okay, Milwaukee Public Schools, all of that money is yours. You get to keep it. You don't have to worry about losing any of that. Now, they may not get all of the the state money for having butts in seats. Again, you know. Several different, you know, piles of money go into a, to a school, but this would this would allocate state money, general revenue money, to go to choice schools. And you know, once the state starts to pay for something, it generally becomes much more permanent. It generally becomes much more stable. And, and in Wisconsin, you know, don't forget we got a three four billion dollar surplus plus two billion in the rainy day fund. And so most people who are on the, the, the side of school choice would rather be getting checks from there than having to depend on school districts who are all going to start to be facing some, some real tough questions because, uh, you know, of inflation building costs. We saw on Tuesday of this week several different local school referendum questions either go up or go down based on what they were. Milwaukee public schools are getting ready to go to ask taxpayers for millions of dollars more come April. So moving choice funding to the school is more stable, eliminating that 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 sort of rolling loss count for MPS particular or for public schools uh, across the state that would provide stability for public schools. They may not get all the money they want, but at least they're going to know with certainty how much money they're going to have. It's an interesting idea, a very interesting idea, and I hope it at least gets more debate. But that's all the time we have now. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. For Ben Young, I'm J.D. Davidson. Thanks for listening, and please subscribe. He ran for state office and was beaten. Started a business and failed. Ran for Congress and lost. But thankfully, Abraham Lincoln didn't give up. Persistence. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com.